Hello and thank you for watching my video which is brought to you in partnership with the Grand Appeal Arts Unleashed programme for the Bristol Royal Hospital for Children. My name is Kai Burton, I'm an artist and illustrator based here in Bristol which basically means that I create drawings and artwork for all sorts of people. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create drawings just like this. And these are adventure, nature and outdoors inspired artwork that you can create yourself. We use simple shapes to build them up and draw them and add in more detail, and I guarantee you that anyone can do it. You don't need many materials, just a pen or pencil and a piece of paper, and make sure to bring lots of enthusiasm and creativity too. Let's get going. So firstly, if you get your big piece of paper, we're gonna be drawing a mountain scene together. And that's going to feature trees and mountains and a big open sky as well. So if you start, we're going to draw some big triangles together. Make them quite flat and layer them up on top of each other. It doesn't matter if they're overlapping a little bit. So have a go and draw out a few big triangles like this. They can be small like that one or really big as well. Now, once you've drawn those big triangles, we're going to draw some medium triangles. Now, make these, the other ones were quite thick and flat. These ones are going to be thin and pointy and draw them at the front. And can you see that I'm just overlapping them all and they look a little bit on top of each other? So you can draw yours as overlapping and as you know busy as you want. Then finally, what you're going to start doing is adding in some really little ones and you're going to draw these all across the diagonal lines of the big triangles, just like I've drawn here. Can you see them adding in? Take some time to add your little triangles as well. Now this is the fun bit where you want to do a big swooshy line from the points of your big triangles. And so the great thing about this is that you can just use the pencil to sketch things in lightly and build it all up together. Because next we're going to add some things into the sky. So up here I'm doing a big circle for a moon and I've done some stars to go with it. Now you can start by drawing a simple cross and then you can jazz it up a little bit if you want. Or you can just draw your own little stars however you'd like, whether it's a big complicated one or just some little dots. You decide what you want to do. So make sure that you're happy with your pencils and what you're going to do, because now we're adding in the pen. So starting with the trees, we're creating these from the triangles that we've put before. And if you just do some dashed lines like I'm doing from the top down, can you see how I'm making it really spiky to look like a big pointy tree? So you can do it like this and fill them all up, layer them all over each other. It doesn't matter if the lines cross over, but if you add this effect onto your trees that you've drawn on top of the triangles, or if you're not sure how to do the slightly curved spiky lines, just draw a big scribble from the top of the triangle down to the bottom. And then we're gonna be filling that in with a big black pen. So make sure you've got one or you can spend ages filling it up and colour it all in and leave the edges all scruffy. This will help make it look like a tree. Can you see how it's starting to form? Make sure that you pause this video to have a go at yours and colour in all of your trees, making them look scruffy, spiky and full of leaves and branches. Now on my drawing, I want to make these trees look like a silhouette. So I'm going to add a line underneath and then fill that area in all with a black pen. And that's just to make it look like they're trees on the top of a hillside. So go through, add some black and color it in to make it look like a dense patch of trees and forestry. So next we're going to be going over the mountain in black pen again. And with this you can make it a bit of a wobbly and not straight and jagged line because a mountain is never straight. 
So just go through and make some pointy mountains in the background. And once you've done that, you can go into the tiny triangles and make some scruffy looking trees in the distance. Again, these don't have to be really neat. Just do a couple of scribbles that look a bit pointy and it'll end up looking like trees on the side of the mountain. And so in our drawing at this point, you want to be thinking how you can add some more detail. Here we're going over the lines that form the edge of the mountain top. And we'll start by just adding in more detail, going over stuff in pen, such as the moon and the stars, starting to ink up this piece and make it really stand out. And you can see as we start to rub out those pencil lines, how the drawing becomes really clear and bold. And next we're going to start adding even more detail. So on one side of the uh, curved line from the top of the mountain, if you do some straight diagonal lines, like you can see here, this will add the shadow to the mountain and make it look like it's 3D and stands out. And already it's all starting to come together and look quite striking and bold. And from there, it's just a case of adding the finishing touches. I'm adding some lines to the bottom of this to make it look like a cliff edge, but you can also add some birds or some other little details on the mountains, maybe some more stars. But there you go. That'll be your mountain and trees drawing finished. Remember to pause this video and have a go and watch back some of the tips. Now we're going to move on to drawing something different. This time we'll be doing a lighthouse looking out over sea. And we're going to start once again with really simple shapes. So draw a line across the page and then a sort of rectangle slash triangle shape coming up from it. Make sure to put a little square and a semicircle on the top, along with some beams coming out of it. And already you can see it starting to look a little bit like a lighthouse. So let's start adding in some waves. These are really easy to draw and you just do some curved lines next to each other. Don't forget to pause this video and have a go yourself to make sure that you can draw one too. You can go at your own pace and feel free to take as much time as you need with yours. We're gonna add the pen a little bit earlier this time just to get in some of those details. So if we start with some of the basic shapes that make up the lighthouse, the square and the weird triangle and the semicircle on the top, of course, if you just go over that with pen, start to add in some detail, like some lines across the side and maybe a little door in the front too. So how do we make these squiggly lines look like waves? Well, we'll start going over them in pen and then rather than just leaving it like that, we can add in a couple more lines just the same. So another squiggle here, more bouncy curvy lines that layered up begin to look like waves. They don't have to be perfectly in line. You can kind of skip a couple or make some that don't quite match up. Feel free to play around to make it look a little bit irregular. As before, this is where we start to add in the detail. So you can add whatever detail you want, but here I'm drawing in some lines to reflect the beam of light that comes out from the lighthouse. And I've started adding in some shading on the stripes to it. Now, can you see, I'm just using straight lines, layering them up and adding some more on top just to make it look a little bit curved and shadowy. So if you start by making it darker at one side and lighter at the other, it'll begin to look like it's a curved surface. And once again, you can add whatever details you want. Maybe it's not a lighthouse, but you want to add in a little boat that's sailing on the waves. Again, using simple shapes like these triangles here, you can make a boat that goes on the water. Let's colour that one in too. And the final thing that I'm going to add is just a couple of fishes under the water. You can draw very simple shapes and because of the illustration style that you're drawing in, it means that you can add them in quite easily. And there you go. That's your little water scene. 
We've got a lighthouse, a boat and some fish in there as well underneath the waves. What are you going to add to yours? Pause it and have a go. Now, for your final one, we're going to be drawing a little house, wooden cavern in the woods. Start by just drawing a simple rectangle and adding a square onto the one side. Afterwards, you put a triangle on the top and then draw a line horizontally from the point of that triangle. And if you just follow what I've done on here, can you see how it starts to fit together and look like a little mini 3D house? Pause the video and have a go yourself to see if you can draw out a couple of houses like this. Find one you're happy with and then we're going to start adding in this background. Can you see these spiky lines that I'm drawing behind it? These are going to form the trees in the background. The next thing that we need is a door and maybe some windows too. So make sure that you add all the details that you want to your house in pencil. These are really simple squares for the windows and rectangles for the door, and maybe even a squiggly line for a path leading up to it too. Now even though it looks like I'm about to draw a sun here, I'm actually putting in a little balloon. If you draw a circle and a square underneath it, then that is going to form the basis of our hot air balloons. To show them flying through the sky, you're going to draw a cloud. And they're really easy to do by just drawing a straight line, and then some bouncy, curvy lines on top of it. Just like these ones here. Straight line, bouncy curves on top of it. Now, just like me, you want to double check and make sure that you're happy with it. So pause the video and go and tweak yours before you start adding in pen, just like this here. When you're happy with your pencil layout, just go over all of your lines with the pen just to get it down and get it into that striking, bold illustration. Like with our first drawing, we're going to colour in the trees in the background to make them a silhouette against our drawing. And with this, you want to fill it in with pen. And then when you get to the top of it, just do some sort of curvy and pointy lines like I've done with this lot of trees. They don't have to be neat, it can be a bit scruffy and a little bit messy too. If you want, take the time to pause the video and you could even add in more detail to the background, just like the mountain scene we'd done before. Next, I'm just going to colour in the path a little bit and add some colour to it before we move on to going over the clouds. Again, as before, a straight line and then some curvy and bouncy lines on top of it. And don't feel like you need to press down super hard here. Use a light touch to make the clouds feel really floaty and fluid and flowing. When you add the black to the balloons, try and add a little bit on the bottom to make them into that classic balloon shape like I've done here. And just connect up the square baskets to the circle bit at the top. Then it'll be time to decorate your balloons. I've just done them with straight lines, both horizontal and vertical. But you can do yours and decorate it however you want. The same goes for the house. I'm doing some straight lines across it to make it look like some wooden planks, but you can add bricks or maybe you could even draw a picture on the side, like it's got a painting on the walls. Try to think about the different types of line you use. Maybe you use a bumpy one for the roof like I've done here and some straight ones for the sides. Remember you can decorate yours however you want. I'm adding a doorknob and some detail on the windows, but you can add anything, whether that's some rocks in the front or trees in the garden. Don't forget to rub out the leftover pencil marks and finish off your illustration. Always look for fun ways that you can add some other details. Like with this one, I'm adding in some birds flying up in the sky but make your illustration feel unique to you and exactly how you want. Imagining that there's a warm fire inside on a cold day or whatever, turn it into a piece that you can be proud of. So I've shown you three ways of drawing illustrations inspired by the outdoors and going on adventures. Now it's time for you to put these skills into practice have a go at drawing your own scenes inspired by these and some of the techniques that you've watched and learnt whilst you've done it. Come up with your own adventures. 
your own spaces where you enjoy going and visiting and being outside in. Which means that my question for you is when you can draw like this, where would you go and what sort of place would you want to be in? Thank you for joining along this online workshop. You can watch it back again and make sure to pause it whenever you need to. I can't wait to see what illustrations you come up with too. Thank you.